city. And yesterday we had in studio the lady at the center of it all, the lady who posted, who first put out that tweet on um, sperm donation and the amount. And yesterday she was on our set and she, she, she spoke and um, said a couple of things. Um, taking something from there, she said something about Jesus having been conceived via IVF. We have a conversation today on sperm donation, looking at the religious aspect with Reverend Dr. Nanaya Premper, who is a life coach. Um, but before we speak to Auntie Nanaya and get her thoughts on this, we'll take a quick break. Pick, show you that video of Abna Manuke coming yesterday on our set. So it's coming up now. Our Lord Jesus Christ came through artificial insemination. Please. Let us be very, very clear about that. There was no, uh -huh, okay, it was artificial insemination. That was how we got our Messiah. So don't come in there and say that it's against God's way. No, no, let us be clear here. You understand? Mm -hmm. There was no way God could have impregnated Mary. There is no way some woman can get pregnant. So there has to be an intervention. So just as there was an intervention for Christ, it is the same way there are, you are laughing, it's making me laugh. It's the same way there are interventions for other women. Welcome back. So that was our bit yesterday. Auntie Nanaya, I don't even know how to call you now. Reverend Doctor, how should I refer to you? Should I just stick to Auntie? Auntie Nanaya is fine. Okay, cool. And Nanaya, so um, have you been following the, the buzz on social media about um, young people, not just young people, people looking to donate their sperms for some sort of token or cash or payment? Oh, good morning to you, my good beautiful um, niece, since you're calling me auntie. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and um, the viewers of GTV Worldwide. Um, Sperm donation buzz. Well, I think it's not really a buzz. It's, um, for some people, it's a matter of life and death. Okay. Uh, because uh, some women who are involved in relationships or marriages that have not been productive, they are the verge of losing the marriage. Okay. Uh, or some men are the verge of losing the marriage if they don't have an issue or they don't have a child. So desperation sets in. And desperation brings frustration and it causes you to do things that you would normally not do. Right. I see sperm donation as uh, another level or another height of technology, okay. innovation creativity and, uh, and, uh, and knowledge. The Bible says that in the, in the last days, knowledge will increase. Okay. So I see it as the increase of knowledge. And just like anything else that becomes, that drives people to be greedy mm -hmm. when money is involved. Yeah. Some people become greedy with everything. Look at this water situation from pra the Pra River. I, I thought it was juice, <laughs> honest to God. When I saw it on, on the table, I thought it was a mango juice with some pineapple, ginger, and all oh, those things. Honestly. That's the say water. Uh, it is we'll be, we'll totally the up here. deplorable. So I think that people are getting to the place where they want to commercialize everything, including babies, including fertility. They want to commercialize it. Making it look like you can touch it if you want. Oh you boy! Oh Jesus! So this is water from yes, River Pra. 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 Yes, Kafui Day collected it himself. Oh Lord, have mercy on Ghana! Please help us. Ten years from now, is this what our children are going to be drinking? Maybe worse. So something has to be done. So the president said he bets his presidency on this. So we know that he will keep on doing something so that we can arrest the situation. This is so terrible. I thought it was juice, honestly. Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice with some mango, some banana, <laughs> ginger. <laughs> and so that's our fight. 
against Galam State. So is there this is a, this is purely a matter of greed. It's greed that drives people to keep doing this. It's an addiction. You know, so let me not deviate from my yes, sperm please. thing, but it, it, it also falls in that space because when somebody, especially the young men, I believe that when they are going to do the donation, they check your medicals. Yes. They check to see if you are fit because they don't want people getting sperm from a junkie or sperm from somebody who has some uh, terminal disease or life-threatening disease. So once they see that, oh, my sperm is attractive, mm -hmm. they go around and they're making money. Just like somebody is giving kidneys to get money. Somebody is giving his teeth to get money. Look at the hair, Brazilian hair. You're wearing a beautiful... Oh, thank you. It's somebody's hair that they're starting to make money. It's the same concept. Right, but we spoke to some people yesterday on the streets and some people said they would do it, but they would do it for humanity if it was going to save somebody. So there are some people who believe if they will do it, they will do it not for... How does sperm save somebody? <laughs> somebody doesn't have a child. And no, yeah, so it's not give... a matter of saving somebody. It's, it's a solution okay. to a problem. The sperm donation, I see it as a solution to a problem. And the problem... It's, uh, it's bringing joy, happiness, and life to a family. Right. So just like when uh, people didn't have teeth and dentists were able to go to the extent of creating dental implants. It's a solution to a problem. So I, I, as a woman of God, I look at it as God giving wisdom. Okay. We don't have anything that God has not given us. For any scientist or any, uh, any inventor to come out with anything, it's an idea that drops from God. He says, I give you power to make wealth. So the idea comes from God. A lot of people have not materialized the ideas. And you see, when I was watching a video that we saw, uh, Kafui showed that. Yes, earlier. There was this man who was jailed for 37 years for something he never did. The man speaking on American Got Talent said that he visualized, he visualized himself while he was in prison and watching America's Got Talent. He visualized himself on that stage. What are you visualizing yourself to do now? So there may be a woman who is in this marriage that doctors are saying your husband doesn't have enough sperm to produce to, st to uh, get a, a fetus or to fertilize, fertilize or whatever, germinate into a child, into a fetus. So this woman will have to lift up her faith and visualize. The man must be involved. Visualize that you have a child. It's a, it's a matter of faith. And once you do, a lot of people will tell you stories. After 20 years, I have a child. After 10 years, I have a child. It's not everybody who went through the uh, uh, sperm donation IVF, process yeah. or IVF. But there is nothing wrong, from my opinion, my perspective, as a mother of four. I was told that I can never have children. Somebody was going around and spreading that news. And indeed, my first child died in my womb when I didn't even know. So if you hear that somebody is spreading news that you can never have children, and then your, your first pregnancy uh, goes that way, if you don't lift up your faith, you accept the situation, and you can never have children. So faith plays a major role in the process of childbirth. And I, I am not coming to preach now, because there are stories in the Bible that I can quote that will lift up your faith if you don't have a child. But going for, for IVF or insemination of uh, sperm, there is nothing wrong with that. Right. You just have to believe that this is another way that God can help you to have a child. If you cannot wait like Sarah waited, you cannot wait like Elizabeth waited. You cannot wait. Yours is Your marriage is on the line. Your man is on the line. Your woman is on the line. So... If you have the money, it's not cheap because somebody takes time to create 
this for you. Somebody takes time to give you medical attention. There has to be an environment that is conducive for that fetus to, to, to form. So if you don't have a medical consultant and you just want to just go to any regular hospital, it's not possible. You need a medical consultant. You need a doctor who is going to take and manage you, take care of you, because your lifestyle will have to change at right. some point. Right. Because you need a conducive environment for, this is a medical process. It has nothing to do with uh, juju. This is not juju. This is money, ega, shika, dinero, goody. <laughs> so if you have the money and you know a doctor who can do it for you, please go and get it done and live the life that you and your husband want to live, period. Your pastor must be able to bless it for you. But you see, sometimes we rush. Because you are married for nine months, you are crying about not getting pregnant. You are married for two years, you are crying about not getting pregnant. You are married for four years, you are crying about not getting pregnant. I mean, what happened to the spirit of patience? Wait. If you want to be able to experience the blessing of God naturally, wait. It will happen. But if the pressures are so much, you think you are losing your man, and you have the money, go and get it done. Ananaya, there are people who might wait, but there are some people who medically have been proving that they cannot have children. Yes. So to those people too, what would you say to them? This is not a matter of waiting. This is medically proving that you cannot have children. Who's, of your whose own. report will you believe? Whose report? Oh, whose report? I mean... Fine. Medi I believe in medicine. Mm. I have my children are doctors, are nurses. I believe in medicine. Me, myself, I've done nursing before. I know what medicine can do. But there is someone who has more power than medicine. He's the one who gives the medical doctor or the medicine makers. He gives them the wisdom. And he says, I can lift up my hand and everything will fall out. So if you want to go the faith way, I'm, I'm with you. I understand. I believe in that. But if you don't have that faith, there is nothing wrong with going for this. It's not cheap, my dear. You may have to sell your car to get a baby. You may, you may have to sell your bond. <laughs> Why are you laughing when I said bond? You may have to sell your bond. You may have to sell your investment to get a baby. It is worth it. But you see, don't, uh, don't say that uh, IVF is not from God. So me, I'm a Christian, I, I have to wait. Uh, no, that is not the mentality you must have. You are waiting because you believe God can make a miracle happen. You're not waiting because IVF is sinful or is juju or you have fallen out of grace. No. Okay. So I, I, honestly, if you ask me, I would tell you, wait and pray and let, make sure you have time for your husband to make love to you. There is no baby without love making unless you go IVF. Unless you go insemination, if you want to have a natural birth, a natural child, make time for sex. You have to make time for it. You don't live in Kumasi, your husband lives in Accra, and you are crying, I don't get pregnant. Holy Ghost, or maybe on far Holy Ghost, and far pregnancy in baby, or you're in the Holy Ghost did it once. And the birth of Christ, the, the conception of Christ was not IVF. It was not artificial intermination. I debunk that right now. The conception of Jesus Christ was by a spiritual force, which is called the Lord of hosts, which is also called the Word of God, which is also called the Spirit of God, which is called God. That was the conception of Jesus Christ. Nothing with artificial. I don't want to hear the word artificial insemination for Jesus Christ. Right. And Nanaya, on social media, the lady who posted this, that caused all the craze, okay? She said between Monday and yesterday, which was, which was Wednesday, she had over 5,000 people, young men, and some women who wanted her to take them to the clinics um, to donate their sperms or eggs and take tokens for it. There's a cross-section of the media not the media, the cross-section of the public who is saying, who is sanctioning this? Are we looking at what's happening? People are just going, they are gullible, do they know the effects? Is there, are there something, some sort of, is there a law that regulates this? Or people are just going haywire because there's a token to be given? You see, when you're going to donate blood, mm. there is a process. 
okay? And the process uh, is available to anyone who wants to donate blood. When you're going to donate an organ for transplant to another human being, there is a process. Anyone who wants to donate an organ has to go through that process to be certified that you qualify for that particular organ to be removed from your body and, and, and transplanted into another person's body. It's the same thing. Anyone who wants to donate sperm can go to the sperm banks and do it. But now that uh, the, the young men think it's a, it's a trend because they are broke. To pay their, someone said he wanted the money to pay his rent. He wanted to go and donate his sperm to get money to pay his rent. Oh, not quite Why? I mean, I, th <laughs> I think that uh, the, the, the doctors or the medical centers who have been equipped, I'm sure that the Ghana Health Service has something to do with uh, uh, certification of the facilities that can do this. Mm -hmm. I cannot be in my house at Ruben Ridge and open my door and say, put a sign there, come and donate spam and get my own refrigerator, and I cannot do that. So those centers must be certified. Mm. And I, I believe that there, are, there will be quack doctors around who can also start praying, start uh, to take prey on the people, the, the vulnerable people who, are, who need the money. But you see, needing money does not make you uh, qualify to do anything you want. Otherwise, all of us here will be doing galamse because there's money in it. Needing money does not say you should go and become a prostitute. Needing money says that you should think and create something that will not harm your neighbor. It will not harm yourself. It will not offend the state that you live in, which has laws. So I, I will charge the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Bediakon, Sefa Bediakon, board chairman, he's my brother. I will charge the Ghana Health Service to put measures in place since... People think that it's an avenue of making money. Put measures in place and make things um, very understanding or understandable for people who want to and those who also want to benefit from it. I, I don't think that we should get to a place where a man can go and say, I want you to, uh, to uh, implant sperm in me so I can also get pregnant. You know there was a man who got pregnant. Yes, but... Yes, and it was through the IVF. So if we don't put but that was laws... A, that, that was a transgender. That he, the person was trans. Yeah, he was trans, but he's a man. He was born a man. And then he said, now I'm a woman. I behave like a woman. So they implanted the sperm in him, and he got pregnant, and they did the C-section, and he has a child. So that is, those are the things that we must curb as a state. We must curb this so that opening up the trend for people to know about sperm donation, somebody can take it as a job. And every month, because men have millions of sperms. Um, millions. <laughs> he can give 10 today and give 100 tomorrow. All they need is one to, to get a, 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 a fetus, to get a, a, a child. So somebody can make this a job, but that's what we have to protect. Right. So that it doesn't become something that people will start abusing because you know we live in a place where people are crying economic this economic that and they want to have an excuse to do anything and justify it but we can't right we, we were having a conversation around the same issue and we said that um the lady who came abna manoke kami yesterday said What's that, her name? That, that that's her name abna manoke kami uh -huh. she makes comments on social media hence <sighs> this and so she said that the, um, let me rephrase my question. So yesterday, Abna Mwanoke Kami said that over 5,000 people had come. This is unregulated. People had gone to the clinics more than seven times, more than four times. Okay. And so during our conversation, someone said that, okay, so if the hotspots are in Accra and Kumasi and Tamale, which the lady mentioned, do we not... In, 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 the, in the near future, having siblings getting attracted to each other. We we'll think maybe they are in love, but it's just because of their genes. Do we see that happening in the near future? Absolutely. That's why I'm saying that the process has to be, uh, it has to be, I don't want to use the word control, but it has to be monitored. Mm. It has to be restricted. It has to be regulated. It, this is the time that the, the state 
must empower the institutions that be to monitor and regulate because otherwise we are going to start marrying our brothers and our sisters because if Kojo goes to donate a sperm and Kojo doesn't tell his wife that I'm going to donate a sperm and his wife also goes to buy a sperm and, and, and the, the sperm that his wife went to buy belongs to Kojo's brother. Kojo's brother is going to donate sperm and he went together with him and they both donated the sperm. And his wife goes to buy his brother's sperm. So I don't know how the medical area is going to handle this, but it is time that we have good regulations to guide this. I think that people also don't want to know whose sperm it is when they're buying it. They don't want to know. I don't know if it's appropriate for people to know so that we can avoid Kojo marrying his own son or his own daughter or uh, Abna marrying her own son and, and, and vice versa. Because if we don't have this transparency, it can happen. It can seriously happen that you will marry your own brother, you will marry your own sister. And, and it's an abomination okay. that our children are going to deal with. Apart from it being an abomination from where you're coming from, someone, Jay, one of our guys here, Jay says that in the near future we are going to have a breakdown of our immune system where if diseases like COVID and ED others hit, this time it will hit the African continent because that's what um, elsewhere people have been doing and so their immune system is broken down. Do you think that's just a fallacy or is something that we should, we should really look at as a state, as uh, religious people, as medical people? I think it's a bit far-fetched, okay. but uh, not saying it's not possible. Uh, we, we cannot sit idle like we did maybe a year ago or two years ago because things are changing. There are places and people who are consciously developing viruses and, and uh, uh, you know, and things like that just to break down some systems. I mean, it's unfortunate. Bible says, uh, Now knowledge is increasing everywhere. I think that we should also invest in research where we can also stand against all these viruses and all these menaces. The, the fact that you, you want to make money doesn't mean that you should get up, go to a spend bank and say, and number mom is saying. Then you give them, okay, take one million. Take one million spams. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, and, then, and then they're saying, it's like, you know, you can go to it's a shame. Yeah, but this is what is going to happen. And then I, uh, in rounding up, young people are watching us. People are interested in this conversation. What would you tell people who are watching us today and people who want to go and donate their spams or who, people who want to go and get spams before we wrap up quickly? Hey, spam, as I say, you know, 20 years ago, <laughs> we, we would never have had this conversation. 20 years ago. Where's my mother? Where's my father? Hey. You, if you want to have a child, you cannot have a child without sperm. That one you have to understand. And I'm sure you know that. You cannot have a child without sperm. Because I said, Holy Ghost came only once to make Mary pregnant. Not by artificial insemination, but by the power of God and the presence of God. That will not happen again, so far as we know. Now, the only way you can have a child is when you sleep with a man. And for now that we are in a digital world, people are able to use insemination called the intraviral uh, IVF. IVF. You can use that to have a child. There is no way you can be pregnant without sperm. So women who are looking for babies have started going around. Oh, the call saying, oh, the doctor is good. And they will refer that. I know several doctors. I know several ladies who have done it. There is nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. So if you want to have a child, it's okay to go for the IVF. If you want to give a, give a sperm, it's okay to go and look for a, a, a certified location, a sperm bank that you can give it. But don't make it a habit. Don't make it a job. Don't make <laughs> it a greed. Because that is not what is intended to be. Thank you. Thank you, Naya. Mm.
Nancy Nanaya, Reverend Dr. Nanaya, Nanaya Prempe is a life coach and she's been talking to us this morning about or shared her views on sperm donation from the religious point of view, from a mother's point of view, from a Ghanaian's point of view and she's saying that you can do it but don't let it become a job. Every week you go to the sperm bank, every week. Don't do that, okay? Come on, take some precautions and this has been our show. Even though we are wrapping up now, we are very interactive across social media. Just look for the hashtag TTV Breakfast, especially on TikTok, TTV Ghana Baby. You see us there. Have a great day.